Now let's go back and talk a little bit more about four-chain review abnormalities. This is the paper I mentioned earlier ago, a few years ago in the United States, looking at percentage of cases of major heart disease that are detected uh, before birth. And as I mentioned earlier, even an AV canal defect, more likely than not, we're, we in the United States have been missing AV canal defects, which is a typical classic four-chain review abnormality that everything else would be normal. And still we're missing those. So we really need to get better at evaluating the four-chamber view and identifying abnormalities on the four-chamber view. It's not just that we need to work on the outflow tracks. We need to be better at looking at abnormalities of the four-chamber view. And again, what we talked about up to this point is the key, I think, is to obtain really high quality four-chamber views and look at all the elements within the four-chamber view in normals, getting in used to doing that on every single heart and the four-chamber view really should be thinking in terms of four-chamber views, plural, multiple views, because seeing the mitral valve, you may require a different angle than seeing the tricuspid valve. And of course, if we want to look at these valves, we can do so parallel. But if we want to look at the septum, we want to be more perpendicular. If we want to look at valvular regurge, we do it from here. So let's start by looking at probably the most common four-chamber view abnormality is, besides an echogenic focus, of course, is an inlet or muscular ventricular septal defect. And I showed you this before, that the concept that you want to be perpendicular, not parallel, and that applies both for 2D and for color. You want to be perpendicular to the septum. This is my favorite view with the LV on the bottom. Perpendicular to, to see the septum really well. And then here, in this case, you need color to be perpendicular too because we're missing it in this clip, but we see it over here. Very common defect, picking up muscular ventricular septal defects. There's some more examples. This one, you could see it's quite large. It's not the absolute number that I think about when someone's, I, I want to look at how big it is compared to the aortic valve annulus. This is about the same size. The VSD is greater than half the size of the aortic valve annulus. That's a significant defect. So this is a, this is a large muscular ventricular septal defect. This one's much smaller. This one's much smaller. You can see the shunting also is, is useful. This is shunting from RV to LV. This is shunting uh, that's bidirectional. Sometimes we see left to right shunting, sometimes bidirectional. It's, it's unusual just to have pure right to left shunt. When we see that prenatally, we need to think, is there some sort of right ventricular alpha tract obstruction, ductal constriction, pulmonary stenosis, some reason why the shunting direction is right to left. This is something very important. This patient, believe it or not, these all come from the same patient from the same scan. This was a baby, the mother had diabetes, so I was scanning this mom for the maternal diabetes. You know, this looked pretty normal to me. This looked pretty normal, but we're not seeing the apex. Look what's down in the apex. Big VSD. So the key is sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, you, the apex sometimes is very hard to open up, but there's a lot of times that we'll see muscular VSDs at the apex. Even after birth, sometimes we miss ven apical, apical ventricular septal defects if we don't spend extra time looking at them. For you to know from a clinical standpoint, a small muscular ventricular septal defect is very unlikely to ever require surgery or medicine. Uh, these defects close on their own within the first few years after birth, sometimes even before birth. But if you see a ventricular septal defect, it, there's a, probably an increased likelihood in that fetus for other cardiac abnormalities. So it deserves careful fetal echocardiographic evaluation. And uh, there may be a potential for a genetic abnormality as well, even though the likelihood for genetic abnormality for muscular VSD is much less than for an AV canal, say, or tetralogy of Fallot. But increasingly in our practice, we do talk about the possibility for genetic abnormality. And if an amnio is done, then we send for a microarray. But that, that's our practice. Uh, but in general, for the clinical outlook, is very good. And these, these VSDs, unless they're quite big, if they're big, then sometimes we need to do, they can develop overcirculation. They start to breathe fast. Babies may not gain weight. They may need medicine for a while. And sometimes we need to do surgery to close them. Sometimes we put a pulmonary artery band initially to get them uh, bigger before we go and bypass to close. But in general, they're very benign. This is just to make sure everyone's aware, this is the four-chamber view portion of the 
ventricular septum. This is the inlet septum here. You could see the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve being offset. This is the atrial ventricular septum, and this is the rest, all muscular septum. So this is all four-chamber view portion of the septum. Now here, this is outlet septum because we see the aortic valve, and here you could see a small VSD in the membranous septum. So this is not really a four-chamber view abnormality. This is the outlet septum. 